For a moment, just imagine being there as one of the believers in our Bible reading today, always being surrounded by fellow believers, sharing what you have with others and with those who are in need. Daily hearing the good news of Jesus, how he died and rose, and what his life meant while he was here on earth. Praying with other believers daily and watching and experiencing something that you are extremely passionate about expand and grow with new converts coming in daily. Doesn't that just sound amazing? I would absolutely love to just experience that. Imagine living out what the Messiah had worked so hard to do. Wouldn't that be amazing? Imagine how different our lives would be if we lived in that era of the early church. On Sundays, we can come to church or watch online and be inspired by the sermon or the songs or what someone said. But then when Monday comes, the grind of life and work kind of dampens that. We forget about what we learnt about on the Sunday. Does that mean that our faith is weak or that we're bad Christians? Now, we're blessed to know that God knows our hearts. As much as the early church at this point may sound like some kind of utopia, there are some things that they did that we can learn from and also put into practice. In our reading, they showed us four habits that they had developed and practiced. The first one is that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. Now, this would have, they would have been taught about Jesus' life, the miracles that he performed, his teachings, his death, and resurrection, and what that means for them, and actually also for us as well. Today, this comes in the form of the Bible. Many of us here have a Bible. I hope so. If you don't have a Bible, come chat to me. I will organize you one. And also devotionals. Some of us like to read a quick devotional in the morning, in the evening. It's even available on our cell phones for us. So it's it's widely available for us to, to read our Bibles. And even through people's testimonies of their personal encounters with God and how he has worked in them and around them. So when last did you read your Bible? And this doesn't necessarily include if someone read, you know, they were reading the Bible and they read it to you. When did you read your Bible to get to know God more? with the intention of learning more about God and Jesus. And also, not only to be, um, yes, and we can also read our Bibles because then it helps us to become better people. Because then there it gives us direction of how we should be acting. It tells us that we must love each other. Also, the Bible helps us to connect with God because God can talk to us through what's written in the Bible. Reading our Bibles might help bring clarity to something you are struggling with or bring a sense of peace and comfort. It might even alert you to a sin in your life that needs addressing. Reading our Bibles is also a way of spending time with God and growing our relationship with God. We know that if you want to grow your relationship with anyone, you have to spend time doing what the other person wants to do. Is that right? You can't just do, you, know, you can't just make them do what you want to do because that's kind of selfish. So we need to read our Bibles more because it's also spending time with God. The next habit that the early church was is they devoted themselves to fellowship. Fellowship is like a get together of fellow believers under any circumstances. Before we have church, you see some people standing outside chatting by the door. That's fellowship. After church, when we go have tea in the hall, that is fellowship. Fellowship is important because it builds a community. It's in those times when you can bear your soul to other believers and they can and are supposed to build you up or help you through whatever you are going through. This part of the passage reminds us that knowing Jesus is also about being a part of a community, encouraging others in faith as well as finding it for ourselves. Now, Fellowship isn't about cliques or having exclusive clubs either. So we shouldn't be using those times to gossip or alienate people, but it should be a time where we come together and know that Jesus is also in our company. Maybe this is one of the secret ingredients to grow St. Columbus. Maybe we need to invite each other to each other's houses more 
And after the service, Fernando and I are looking forward to invites to Sunday lunch, especially if you cook them nicely. I'm just joking. <laughs> Breaking of bread in the way of the Lord's Supper also reminds us of what Jesus went through for us, the sacrifice he made for us. And because of that sacrifice, we're able to come freely to God. And also when we have communion or break bread, it's also showing that Jesus is with us in that moment. And that's pretty cool. The next habit that the early church devoted themselves to was prayer. This is probably one of the most underestimated aspects of a Christian's life. And not just praying for you, but praying for your neighbor too. Prayer is what instantly connects us to God via His Holy Spirit. God hears all our prayers, no matter how big or small they are. The Bible says in James 5 verse 16, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. We can sometimes think that we are not that righteous person, that there is someone out there who is way more righteous who should be praying for people. Okay, but how do you know that you aren't that righteous person? Which scale of comparison are you using to say, okay, this person is more righteous than what I am? When did God make you God to decide that? We must remember here that it is only Jesus who makes us righteous. We cannot make ourselves righteous. It is only Jesus who makes us righteous. Because when you are made righteous, you are made right with God. God hears every single one of your prayers. And maybe you are that one person's prayer which could make a difference in their life. That is quite significant. Maybe you are that one person's prayer that could actually really help that person. Sometimes it feels like God doesn't hear our prayers because we feel like they aren't being answered. But maybe they are, just not in the way that you think they are, or not in the way that you want them to be answered. That doesn't mean that God isn't working. Just remember at the end of the day, God is still good, whatever the outcome is. The Holy Spirit also inspired their life, the community life. Outsiders could see that there was something different about them compared to all the other groups, which made them want to join, as we see that there are hundreds of converts each day. And it was all because of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. And just as Jesus told him that he was their shepherd, Jesus is also our good shepherd. This was able to happen because of their devotion to him, out of love to him because of his love for them, his love for us. We see that being a believer isn't a selfish thing. When we become Christians, it does not mean that we go to, on this journey by ourselves, but rather that it has to be shared. We can't keep being a Christian to ourselves. It needs to be shared. We must show people who our Good Shepherd is. We are Jesus' hands and feet on this earth. So are you reading your Bible, having fellowship, breaking bread with others and praying? But also, are you living a life as a Christian who is keeping their faith to themselves? Or are you living in a way that you are making people curious and wanting to find out more and wanting to be a fellow, a fellow believer? Are you sharing your faith? Do the people in your workplace or where you stay, do they know that you're a Christian? And if you, even if you don't outright say, I am a Christian, are you showing them that you are a Christian? Because it is up to us to show people Jesus. <laughs>